Pick the Nintendo Shack and pray. Frederick from Fire Emblem Awakening says, yo. Greetings, Koopalings, and welcome back to the Nintendo Shack. We're recording episode 97 tonight on September 4th, 2019. And how could we not kick off PSVG September to remember without a big, fat Nintendo Direct? Player two in tonight's show is none other than Miss Caroline. And making a special return to the Shack is the human cheat code himself, Kevin from PSVG Prime. He was so excited, he thought he was number two. Did you see his face? (laughs) No, I was trying to figure out human cheat code, trying to figure out what that means. Oh. <laughs> Before we begin the show, a quick thank you to all that support us at the producer level over at patreon.com slash PSVG. Thank you, Callo, Barry, Josh, Chris, Devin, Kyle, Benji, Paul, and Joel, the Professor Switch Voss. We appreciate everything that you do. It's going to be a rush show. Not because I don't want to rush it like I did last show. But because we are on a timer, we have another show to record. We've talked about this in the Discord, we put it on Twitter, but just in case you're hearing this first, we will release two episodes of Nintendo Shack this week. We were not anticipating a direct, or were we? But we'll have two episodes of Nintendo Shack. We have this one that you should be hearing as soon as possible. We just had the direct on Wednesday. This should be out by Thursday morning. And then we'll have another one following up shortly thereafter with a special guest that came came to hang out with us in Nintendo Shack. So we are on a timer. We've got to get through this in an hour. So we're going to rush maybe some things. I don't know, but we're going to get started. And if we hit the hour mark, we got to go. We might just abruptly end the show. We got to, we got to bounce. <laughs> so guys, um, they kicked off the, the, the Nintendo Direct with a bang, as we all expected. Overwatch mm-hmm. kicks mm-hmm. off the show. It's out October 15th. What do you guys think? I, I I already gave Blizzard my money for WoW, so I'm not giving them my money for this. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. Uh, I, I I probably won't get this. Let's be honest. I have it on PS4, I think already. Um, I am impressed though that they are only going for the forty dollars, and they're giving fifteen bonus skins to start off. So they're giving a good value though That's for anybody a who is good value. interested in jumping in, or in the case of our buddy Kyle, uh, double dipping, or in his case, triple dipping. I believe for Overwatch. Yeah. So I I was. I was trying to think of this earlier today because I can't really come up with a scenario where I would pay $60 to play Overwatch mm-hmm. because I have the other consoles. It's affordable other places. Now that they've loaded it to 40 I could possibly even snake my way through Caroline's GCU to get it for 30 ish <laughs> If you want. If you want. Now, here's the thing. Is there a subscription for monthly? No. No. Nothing like that? Nope. Okay. No. You just buy the game um, and you get to play it. Also, the 15 bonus skins, are they givens, or can you choose which one you want? Mm. Diva's my girl, man, and her skins are a range of, okay, They're probably pre-selected, it sounds like. I don't think you get to pick which ones, because I, I know imagine. they do limited time for certain skins, too, so it's probably There's one. so many characters. Pre-select. I remember when Overwatch launched, and there were, like, maybe 10. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's this is probably my biggest blind spot of this generation. This is such a huge game. So many people play it. I've never played it. Not a free weekend, mm. not a demo, not, mm. not one match. So... Maybe it's finally it. coming. Great. I'm thinking, and the reason I'm leaning towards Switch, not only because I do love the Switch, so fanboy is inside. You know, Jack plays the competitive shooter, which we've chronicled here for a year right. plus now. He might be into Overwatch. And that that kind of oh, gives sure, me the him. extra urge to maybe get it on Switch because he'd play it more on Switch. His friends have Switch, they'll bring it to the school. It's worth mentioning, I pulled this from the press release that went out just before the Direct aired. Um, the Overwatch Legendary Edition for Nintendo Switch will be available in a boxed version containing a code to download the game. Yeah! So this All is right. not a physical cartridge. You will be the buying a download can, either way. I, Sonic Mania did that with the Collector's Edition when they came out with a big box that I paid seventy nine ninety nine for for the Super Sonic trophy or whatever it was, and they gave me a code. But at least they gave you something. Like, you got a statue. So, yeah, you got a code, but you got something. This is just a box. Then they came out with a physical release, like, a year later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're not getting a cartridge. It's just a download only. And it's, it's interesting because you can buy a physical version of the download code for cheaper if you have access to, you know, <laughs> GCU. <Yeah>. Or <laughs> if Walmart keeps doing the thing that they keep doing. You know, Walmart keeps matching, you know, this low oh, price. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon sometimes is doing price cuts at launch, too. Why so. isn't anybody digitally do Like, why aren't the digital shops competing in that space? It makes no sense. But 
Mm-hmm. That's that's not neither here nor there. Um, they did show off a little bit more Luigi's Mansion Three, yeah. which is out on Halloween. Caroline, what did you uh, mean, what did you take from this? Um, I really like the Egyptian like pyramid ancient stuff. I think that's a neat thing because who doesn't? I love the creepy mummy kind of. I love learning about ancient. What do you do? Call Egyptian it? culture. Mm-hmm. We got it. Egyptian <laughs> culture, whatever, whatever. It's a mansion. Whatever. Use mansion. Yeah. Mansion culture. <laughs> anyway, um, I have like a big soft spot for Egyptian mythology and stuff like that. So if they can tie that kind of thing in there, that would be great. Um, mummies are cool. Disco floor is what I wrote down. There was a pirate floor. So it looks like there. it's just kind of, I kind of got the vibe that it's um, each floor is kind of like a different world or thematic, so to mm-hmm. speak. Just cool. Uh, it's a good way to kind of freshen things up. You're not solely throwing all of your eggs into the creepy basket. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, uh, I should have mentioned this last time we talked about, we we're talking about your, your spooky elements. Your level of horror is very like goosebumps. You like yeah. goosebumps level of horror, whereas <laughs> I have a much heightened sense for the Well, I don't stuff. like gore and I don't like killing and stuff like that. I just, I can't do it. I have anxiety really bad. I'm very excited for the mini games, especially if they can capture even just a bit of the magic that is Nintendo Land. Nintendo Land, the yeah, Luigi's exactly. Mansion Nintendo Land mini game is boss. That game is amazing on its own. So I hope they have something like that in here. It looked pretty cute. We'll see. I was getting more Mario Party vibes than anything. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. Anything, Kevin? I, I'm just still jazzed for this game. This is one of my big releases this year. I think it looks. You know, graphically, it looks incredible. It's a really sharp looking game, and I love the whole uh, themed hotel. You know, they're going for each floor is a different thing. The pirates, the restaurant, that's that's great. Keep it fresh. You know, I like feel the like you're in this giant too. thing. I'm getting exactly Hollywood Studios vibes. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, yep. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm all for it. I'm, this just makes me more excited. They didn't need to show me anymore, but they did. So I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Kevin, are you all excited about a free to start Kirby game, Super Kirby Clash? It's out now. You can go download it today. So you're going to be surprised. Because you are excited. I think I will try it. I'm of course you will, because you thought, should, because it's good. I thought this was cool. This was a cool <laughs> idea. So th- this is what this is what I think people would want more from a Kirby game. I, I, I get that Well, they, they did the this stuff games. like on 3DS. They have a couple exactly. of these little like, yeah. battle clashers exactly. or whatever they were called. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this seems cool enough to absolutely try out. I- I'm wondering what free to start means. Yeah. Like, is that really free to play and then you can buy extra stuff? Or is this like you can play the first couple levels and then you need to, buy, you the buy the game? I think it's yeah. like a Pokemon Quest thing. You know how Pokemon. Yeah, if it's like that, that's fine. You could could, grind, and you you could could grind your way out Mm -hmm. that entire thing. Yeah, you could could just unlock the game and play it. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. I would appreciate it that way. I was when when this was first announced, I was one hundred percent sure it was for Nintendo Switch Online members only. That's what I was like. Oh, okay, this is great, Nintendo Switch Online Kirby game, but it's not. So, and I was Mm -hmm. thinking the same thing. I was wondering like because they showed all these cosmetics and upgrades. Like, can you buy those separately? Is like do you Mm -hmm. earn in game reward to do that? But you can buy those. Like, I don't know. So we've got to get it. Like I said, we were 10 minutes. The show ended 10 minutes ago, so we were light on details. But hey, free Kirby game. Mm-hmm. I always like Kirby Can't game. Can't go wrong. Um, Caroline, take the next one. Uh, oh. Trials of Mana <laughs> remake, which Trials of Mana is, for those of you guys who don't know, Seiken Densetsu 3 that never came to the United States. States until it came in the collection of Mana, which was just released earlier this year. Um, They are getting a remake, kind of like Secret of Mana got a remake last year or so. It's coming April 24th, 2020. Uh, They've added some new mechanics, like you can choose your character, either goes light or dark for the certain class that you choose. Uh, This is another JRPG that I'll have to put on my list eventually. I need to play the original in its entirety, because I did get Collection of Mana physically. I just haven't sat down to even... I haven't even opened it, guys. I haven't even opened it. Too busy playing WoW. Too busy yeah. playing WoW. That's true. The next game is something that we've been kind of on the lookout for a while now. Return of the Oberdin is coming to Switch. Finally uh, announced. I think everybody that played this game on PC over the past year always thought it was going to come to Switch. All the podcasters that I've listened to for the past year, and I'm really throwing out kind of like the bigger sites, the Kotakus of the world, the Polygons of the world, they have talked about this game a lot. It made it into several Game of the Year lists last year. Um, so apparently it's very, very good. It has like this black and white monochrome, like, you know, s- yeah, style that I think can rub people the right or the wrong way. Like uh-huh. at face value, you're going to look at that game and you're going to know if that's a game you're interested in playing or a game that it's not. But if you look at it and you think it's something for you, 
I would. The only thing that I could suggest to you is to go look up reviews of the game. If you've never heard about mm-hmm. this game before, apparently this game reviews really well. Apparently it's very, very good. That's all I can say about it. I haven't played it. I haven't watched people play it. But I, from what I hear, it's a very, very good game. And uh, if you've never heard about it and the style doesn't throw you off, you should maybe be excited. Okay. I, I agree. I mean, it look, visually it looks interesting. Uh, nothing that they showed me was making me think like, okay, I need to play this one. But I do appreciate the the very unique um art style for it for sure sure yeah the art style might it just just from how detailed things were on top of mm-hmm. the ship it seemed like there was almost too much detail for it to just be outlines and filled space uh so it would be something my eyes would have to adjust to but i do like the kind of detective finding games that's what i'm really enjoying and apparently in that saying, regard go ahead are you saying you hate those blurred lines Oh my gosh, I can't believe you just said that. some PSVG Prime stuff. Uh, I can't believe you just said that. Um, Apparently the detective stuff and the story stuff is really, really good. I've Mm -hmm. heard um, Jason Schreier go on and on about this game. I think he he talked about this game for like five podcasts in a row. It's like he he loved the game. So that's all I can say about it. Little Town Hero, a.k.a. Town. That game we've been expecting from Game Freak. That game we all thought, I feel, we all thought was next year yeah. Ta- easy next year nope it's out We'd before luigi's it. mansion it's out next month yeah. it's out we've never Pokemon. seen it before and it's literally like within the next you know six weeks yep it's out october 16th Amazing. um they showcase the battle menu which i'm still i didn't catch it so uh, i saw the radial wheel flip between weapons pretty so much. you pick and choose and it's turn-based Yes, it's similar to Pokemon. Okay, because for a like moment that. I saw them like spin the option, and I I got the impression I was like, is, so is it like random? You like spin the wheel? No. no. Okay, I didn't catch that. <laughs> that's what I was wondering. I was like, wait a minute, I didn't catch that. It's hard to take notes and watch at the same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks good. Looks like RPG. I know Caroline's very very excited. They made her more excited because Toby Fox, the oh, creator man. of Undertale, who has amazing tunes in that that game, by the way is doing the music for this game. What an amazing honor for him, like being brought on by one of Nintendo's main developers to do music for this. It's incredible. With this Can't game wait. being, they didn't, give, they didn't give us a price for it, right? No, but I'm pretty sure it'd probably be a $59.99 game if I So had to what guess. I was going to say, with this game coming out soon, with the limited amount of time that we built up to it, are we thinking this is like a big game? Because I'm starting to get the sense maybe it's smaller in nature than we think. Maybe it's a it budget release. Be- Maybe, but why would they do that if Pokemon is literally within the next month? Because Game Freak releases a lot of smaller little indie-ish types sure. of games. They've done that on the 3DS in the past and whatnot. I don't think they've ever had the spotlight by Nintendo for a game like that as much but as this. literally a month before? I that's would have why, held it until early next year. I kind of think it's not that big of a game. Like That's, that's so my I impression that I get is it's a it's a kind of small... I'm, yeah. I mean, I don't want to price a game just by looking at it or whatnot, but like the sure. impression based on how they're positioning it, when they're releasing it, how much they've led into it. This well, hasn't been... Be, we haven't... This hasn't been demoed or previewed at like PAX. We mm-hmm. had not known it's coming this soon. Yeah. Makes We've me think maybe it's, like a, it. maybe it's like a budget, like a... What's the right word? I keep saying budget and budget sounds wrong. I'm not, that's not the word I'm trying to think of. Maybe like, um, like an experimental mean. type game. This is a game for mm-hmm. them to like test some stuff out, you know, flex their legs and, and whatnot. So, I'm going to yeah. check uh, sites while we're talking. Just I'm, see still, if a placeholder yet. I'm still thinking it's 60 bucks, but I'm with Donnie. I think it's a small game. I think it's going to be short. You got to factor in stealth release, no information since they announced it, what, two E3s ago? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden it's coming out and they're dropping it right before a game that they know is going to steamroll right over it. Like Pokemon is going to sell ten times what this game will sell. Oh, and for sure. As I said to Carol before, like I was interested in, in town when we first heard about. It. I was like, okay, let's see if they do something different. Mm. And unfortunately for me, my impressions are it's not different. It's Pokemon minus the Pokemon. Ooh, really? So I think it's I think it's, it's still more monsters. Than that. You're fighting monsters. You're doing turn based combat based on their. It's rock paper scissor combat again. True, but you're you know like the whole idea is instead of you know traversing the land and collecting all your badges to go ultimately become champion as you're helping this town you're like right. building this town so it's like the city builder you know Mario maker horrible. to raise this castle type thing as you mm. defeat all the folks i didn't get that impression okay. from it but i could be wrong i could okay. be wrong yeah we both could be <laughs> we yeah, saw well, it for, for we, we have zero details <laughs> we saw it for 18 shot, seconds and then we yeah. hit record <laughs> banjo kazooie is out today for smash mm-hmm. ultimate and um sakurai was doing a, a presentation and demo right after direct in i watched two minutes of it and i had yep. to go 
Apparently, he showed off some, uh, speaking of Toby Fox that we were talking about, they were uh, showing off some of the new things coming in this pack, and one of them is a me costume for Sans. Okay, from okay, that's good. That's good. That leak out there that we've been talking about for the so past couple weeks kept saying Sans was going to be in Smash and yeah. all this different stuff. I think that's a little a little far for Undertale, but that's just my opinion, I guess. Well, he is in Smash now, so you go. Well, that's true. Awesome. That's true. I meant like as the, the fifth yeah. character in my DLC pass. I would have been upset. He doesn't fight. They I would have been upset. Undertale, if, so what if, would they do? if Sans got in before Shantae, I would have hit the mic furious. You're not going to like, I would have been so have pissed been off. Like, travesty. Oh, I brought up 10 characters that I would rather have, but I would have you, been. You can't, you can't have a character who doesn't fight in Smash. Like there's no combat in Undertale. What does he do? He just dodge until you get a final Smash. He just and taunts like, you. Like, Technically yeah. there's combat, but not in the combat no. that you think. Yeah. Um, no, no combat. So one of the cool things before we talk about the, the fighter that was announced that that's leaked for a while now that we all know, mm-hmm. I saw something that I never thought I'd see. Apparently in his uh, demo, I saw this in Twitter, so it could have been faked. I don't think it is. Apparently in his little demo of Banjo, he mentioned that you can play the original Banjo right now if you go buy it on Xbox One. Like that was a screen. And it's yeah, like, go no. play Banjo Kazooie now on Xbox One. No, but did you, you didn't hmm. watch the thing? I didn't did watch you? it, no, because we were okay, so trying to put some I, notes I made, I made a note about it. it. He said that Rare owns, or is owned by Microsoft now, and that they are rival content holders, but that for the Banjo-Kazooie release, Rare welcomed us with open arms, and then he said, everybody go play the old Banjo-Kazooie games on Xbox systems, and then you hear like the people <laughs> in the background that are filming just like dying laughing. Oh, man. They should really release Rare Replay on Switch. I would mm-hmm. totally. I mean, I buy it and still play it. I played Purple Dark two. I believe they haven't not too done long it. ago, but I would. I would rebuy it on Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So getting to the to the news, everybody knows Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury is your fourth um, Fighter Pass DLC character. All right. I'm gonna get out of the way here. I never played Fatal Fury. I haven't played King played of Fighters. I haven't played Samurai Showdown. I mean, this should not come shocking news to most people who have listened to PSVG <laughs> for some time. I don't play mini fighters, don't even play Smash all that much, and I definitely didn't play Neo Geo whatever right, things back right. in the day. So I'm gonna get out of the way and let you guys talk about it. I, I'm kind of all right. So let me just go a that pixelized animation where everything was done that was and the old sky, that well, it was incredible. Like I can't believe they went to all of the effort to do it like that. Uh, I saw my girl Nakaruru, and I was very upset when she didn't get the, the envelope. <laughs> I was like, it's not her. Great. Um, but, the, you know, I was thinking about it. It makes more sense now for a Neo Geo game to come to here. Be- Literally, there's a million Neo Geo arcade games on the Switch right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. There's like I got between Turf Masters. And 30. Games yeah, dope. yeah. So there's a presence of Neo Geo and SNK stuff. Uh, Plus there. there's the SNK versus Capcom series there right? is yes yeah. that, so that's i'm not saying it's not deserving i'm just saying i personally have you know as somebody right. who bought the fighter pass this moves the needle in no direction for me mm-hmm. whatsoever Same for me i don't too. care fatal fatal fury is not my like i would prefer a samurai showdown character personally uh i get that fatal fury is big stuff uh, but as rebecca and i were talking about he is physically so similar to ken it's just ken with a ball cap pretty much that's it and long ponytail, you know. Luigi's just like Mario, but skinnier and taller. Yeah, yeah, but he has. His, did, yeah, I guess you're right. I they can't play differently. That. At that it'll be point, interesting yeah. to see. It'll be interesting to see what different mechanics they have for him being from a similar fighting game to Street Fighter. Yeah, well, it, I mean, Terry's different. I mean, he's different in the fact he's not doing like karate. He's more street fighting, like literally sure. street fighting. Like he's down and dirty. He's more like um, uh, Final Fight style of combat, right, where it's right. like the kick punch throw mm-hmm. beer bottles at you kind of guy versus, you know, I'm going to throw Can they put beer like, bottles in smash. They, yeah, why not? You stab people, you shoot people with guns. Like you throw it's beer true. bottle. It's fine. Yeah. I give root beer. It's a root beer, bottle. it's a root beer. Root beer bottle. It's fine. Duff beer. Stick throws grenades. Like <laughs> Link throws bombs. Like the beer bottle is less lethal than those. Things. Duff man for um, smash. That's all yeah, I just yeah. got. I just got Duff man. How amazing would it be? Duff man. That would have been, oh, it would be great. 
so I I just traded in Smash. There's no secret there, and I never bought the the pass. None of the characters were popping for me. The other one I was I was mildly excited for was actually Banjo. Um, sure. This like Donnie doesn't move the needle to make me regret trading it in or say, oh man, I need to rebuy it. No, I'm still good, and and I'll save the, the next portion. I have other thoughts on your next note here. The most important thing that came out of the Smash news is they announced that more DLC characters will come. Now, when they when they talked about it, Caroline both thought we thought it was to be included in the Fighter Pass. The PR release made that very clear. It's not. So oh. the fighter pass will give us the five. We're still waiting for the fifth and final pass member. And then they will release new characters that will not be a part of the pass. You'll have mm. to pay for them individually as they come out. Or so they'll do another. They might do another. pass. They might do another pass. But yeah. uh, what I imagine is they'll probably be pay for each one. And then after four or five, mm. after they'll bundle them Sunrise together. It's never going thing. to be able to retire. Bless his heart. So the, if, we don't know how many and we don't know when. So it's hard yeah. to get too excited, but like if if you're if you had a a, a rooting interest in someone, like there's hope, still a fire. Yeah, their hope is not lost. Maybe we can get Shantae in Smash. <gasps> so, Please. Like, is, any, anything else? Like, do, does anybody have? You know, I know no, everybody I'm, I'm likes not, Gino so and Goku. Shantae is the one no, no, I would Goku, love to please. put Shantae in Smash. If it's an yeah. anime, there's no need for it to be in. No, no they have their own fighting games. Um, yeah. No, I will just say I was not shocked or surprised at all at this announcement when they said, "Hey, we're going to make more characters." So it's like yeah. we said that we said that in the beginning when they yeah. when they said only five. I was like, they've got to be making more. Mm-hmm. I'd be down for more Fire Emblem and more Xenoblade characters. And I know Smash people hate maybe hearing that. Maybe but that's what they're doing. Maybe put they're Pyra add- Mithra in there. Like, if, yeah, do it. Let's do it. Byleth. And- I'm all for it. Dude, Edelgard has got the biggest cult following. I would it's love. Crazy. I mean, how cool would it be if there was a three houses character where the echoes were the three captains? Oh Maybe. no! Don't tell See? me. See, like, how good would that be? That There's would be amazing. Be a... Basically, train them in whatever weapon you want. Be, so that'd be so good. Have axe, sword, bow. All right, that's a whole different thing for that'd another. There's going to be a Guiji shadow fighter. All right, I'm going to move quickly here. So, <laughs> Link's Awakening got another tease. They showed yep. Dungeon Maker, Dragon Quest Eleven. They mentioned the free DLC Champions Pack. Did we know about that before? I felt like we did. I feel no, like we did I too. I don't, okay, I don't, I don't think they so. showed like the same clip. That the same clip where he's wearing the different outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bridge. I, I, I thought shown, so I was I watching. Know. I was like, that's not the first I've heard of this. But no, maybe I'm a confusing a PS4 thing or I don't know. Could be. Tokyo Mirage Sessions oh. hashtag Effie comes back to haunt Kevin's life with the Encore Edition. It's coming to oh, Switch God. in so, January. So this- this is the game that in the rumors are hey there's this game coming out that nobody asked for yep this wii u port this game this is the one in japan yes sold in the u.s did not sell that great so nope why i'm literally the only person that you know that played it yes (laughs) and if if you've been been meaning to play it if you've been with nintendo shack since the beginning we've had many an episode where kevin (laughs) made fun of my my adoration for Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp Effie. Boys boys in bathing suit shorts, sure. tight bathing suit shorts, dancing Tokyo Mirage hat. They highlighted downside, Sharp Fe dollar sign. <laughs> they highlighted edition. Tiki, which is cool. They're going to add a new song, which is cool. I am not going to rebuy this game. I did not finish this game. What I will leave you with is what I've told Somebody Caroline. Somebody Twitch clip that. Somebody Twitch clip Donnie saying he's not buying this game. So I'm when not he buying buys this game, game again. Uh, so when he buys it again, I, we have no. I still have it. Caroline's seen it. I still have it this game. You're buy it again. I still have it. I have it on Wii U. You don't have, have Tiki song. You don't have Tiki song. I don't need you that. Have physical? Yeah. Can I buy it from you? No. <laughs> so he can buy <laughs> the Switch version. It? I never get rid of my Fire Emblems. <laughs> Why? Okay. It's not a Fire Emblem. <laughs> not really. It's really it's not, not a Fire Emblem game. It's a game. game. Just it's, Dance Tokyo Yeah, Mirage it really is Fire not a Fire Emblem, Emblem game. But I did enjoy it. It was fun. It has like some of that. You can see... I'm not sure if it had any influence on where Fire Emblem Three Houses went, but it is kind of a there's a bridge there from sure. old school Fire Emblem through Tokyo Mirage Sessions to Fire Emblem now. Mm-hmm. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, if you remember, had more of that persona esque elements to it, and that was the thing that I brought to the podcast when it was released back in the day. I thought Definitely. it was a good, not great game. It is a good RPG. There's a lot to it, dungeon crawling and all that. And it's fun. I did like the J pop, as I've been told. The anime is the the, the K pop stuff is the best part of the game. So if you're not into that, you're not going to enjoy it because it, there's literally like many like segments of the game where you're in a music studio. So like if you're not into that, you're not going to like it. All right. Deadly Premonition 2 comes out on Switch in 2020. The original game, Deadly Premonition, is out today on the eShop. Now, we got hit with questions and we got hit with a tag from Grouchy Surge <laughs> saying, you know, hashtag Donna game. Here's the thing. I've never yeah. played this game. I know what this well, game is. And the reason why I've never played it, it's bad. 
Yeah, like no. if you if you no. go if you go look up this game on Metacritic, ninety percent. What? Are no, you at the wrong game. Deadly Premonition two. <laughs> look at one, not two. Mm hmm. Deadly Premonition one. Ninety percent of ninety uh, percent like this video game on Google. On Google, <laughs> what does that mean? It's not about like if you watch, search on Google. This, I'm watching like both of them at the same time, and this is just if you're not watching, this is great video. Deadly Premonition <laughs> on oh, yeah, Xbox in 2010 oh. has a Metacritic of 68. Hmm. Um, but Deadly Premonition 2 is the highlight of the show. That's what they talked about. That's the one that they focused on. The best review for it on um, Open Critic is a 70, and the first line of that review says deadly premonition 2 is so bad you have to play it it makes it good like that, that's the <laughs> opening thing so that's what i remember from the series and that's why i never played it i never heard anybody tell me that it was great i knew about it i actually i think i might even have bought the original on steam i think I even have the steam game and i think wow. i tried it back when i had my alienware um didn't look great it's not remastered like it's very much a right, port yeah. it's the game it's the old 360 version it's an old game um so but from what everything i've been told up until this moment of kevin telling me that it's good i've been told that it wasn't so hot it's not I've, it's I've not never great played. it it has technical issues more than uh, design issues like it's a good execution of an idea it just technically wasn't there so at great the time seven it was released Luke Lord Grade yeah. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think you would enjoy it, depending on the price. I mean, if it's sixty dollars for Daily Premonition Two, hell no. But if it's it something more reasonable, it's worth it giving a shot. Can't be that old. You can buy this game no. for like two dollars on Steam. That's what I mean. It. If it's like if it's like twenty or thirty bucks, I think it's worth a go. I never played two. I played one. Um, and just technical issues is more what it had back then. Okay, and I and yeah, I've really only ever followed two. I never actually got into one. Yeah. No. But like, it has this whole Resident Evil Eternal mm -hmm. Darkness type thing. But I don't yeah, think absolutely. it ever reached that acclaim. No, 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 it didn't. Okay, so maybe uh, Divinity Original Sin Two. Talk about a highly rated game. Now this is a big yeah, RPG not. World of Warcraft type thing. This game is beloved. Every time yeah. this game has come up, or and I think this is, if I remember, and, and the counting is wrong, but Kevin, you and I have discussed this game on podcast two or three times now. Like yep. when it made its way to console, I think we're on PSVG, and I've told you yep. every time it comes up, what do I say? I've never played it. But every time I hear about it, people act like it's the greatest game it's, ever made. Yes. And if yep. you look it up on Steam, it has 50,000 reviews that average out to a 10. And yep. Metacritic's like a 95. People yeah, love this insane. freaking game. Yep. This game's amazing. I've never played it. Ever. Which makes it it makes it makes a shame that the visuals we saw on Switch were absolute garbage it compared did not to look, everything every other release. So it's kind of sad. That, did not look that, good. That Metacritic score is going to go down a little bit, I think, with the Switch release. <laughs> That's true. But a great game. If you've never yes. played it and you're into RPGs, a great game on the way. Speaking Absolutely. about another great game on the way, Pete Hines from Bethesda drops <laughs> in to announce Doom 64. That's Thinking crazy. about Kevin. The first re-release of Doom 64 comes to November 22nd. Kevin, you've got to be stoked to play Doom 64 on your Nintendo Switch, right? I'm more excited for this than I was Turok. I'll, I'll give you that much. Oh, at least. So, take oh, it. Turok, yeah, Turok 2 is way better than Doom 64. Uh, I don't know. Listeners, you let us know on that one. Let's do a, do a Twitter poll on that one. Um no, it is it is very cool, and if you think about it, what every Doom game is now going to be available on Nintendo that's Switch. True. That's true. Cool. I think it might be the first, it's the first console because Doom sixty four has never put on anything else. So which one so runs first, better, Doom sixty four or Doom Eternal? <laughs> 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 well, I think it's a straight port of the sixty four, so it, it might is. be Doom Eternal, might still be better. <laughs> wow! At least Turok two was remastered. <laughs> that's this is true. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. We saw a new multiplayer shooter game. Hmm. Rogue Company, new IP from High Res Studios, comes out next year. I thought what we showed looked, I don't know what they were capturing it on, but if that's a Switch game and it runs like that on the Switch, it looked pretty decent. Not like mm -hmm. it wasn't blown away, not Overwatch great, but looked good. I was like, it looks like a good, competent shooter. I right. mean, is there anything really more to take from that? I don't know. Uh, no, not yet. I think we'll see more on it. It's a very cool idea. Like you said, it's very much Overwatch, team based combat with yep. hero. You know, selection there, so it could be cool. But is sixty dollars release? I don't know. But they didn't talk about the modes and stuff. They said there were modes, They're like you compete with right. your friends, but they didn't really dive into the game. So it's really hard to take much away from it. You know? Yeah, I think it's just dropping the map. You might have capture the flag mode. You might have kill kill all your opponent mode type deal. I think it's gonna be like that, uh, using your special abilities and stuff, similar like Apex, but on a smaller scale with just two teams. Okay, mm -hmm. Caroline, hit me with some Pokemon news. 
Pokemon, Pokemon Sword and Shield. We got character customization. I'm going like to take a nap. I'll be back in a couple. Thing. Oh my gosh. So uh, they showed like tons of outfits similar to what you could do in X and Y. Yeah, similar to what you could do in Sun and Moon. It's back. I'm glad. Uh, they added Pokemon Camp, which is a thing where you can play mini games with your Pokemon, level them up, kind of, you know, gain affinity with your Pokemon. You can also visit other people's camps and see their Pokemon if they're like stationed their little tents out in the wild. They showed a weird mechanic where you cook curry and rice and there's like over a hundred different cooking recipes for just curry. Which just that's curry. super, that's super, you know, specialized for, you know, England, which is the game is set in, you know, rice and curry is, you know, big, big deal there. Is it? No, not at all. That's He's my being sarcastic. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't well, match just, the theme of this. Well, I mean, I England that's took over a lot Brian. of countries that right. make that's what do what fish and chips. Brian. <laughs> Brian was uh, Brian was talking about it, and he's like, you know, they have a lot of Indian immigrants, and mm. so like yes, it, they do. They have yeah. adopted a lot of like adopted. And stuff. Is that the word adopted? we're using now? Adopted? I thought they took for it. just a dollar a day. <laughs> you can adopt. These. They they oh. they they claimed they took over these people. No, I'm saying there's a lot of Indian immigrants in england right because now because they were taken their oh also God. the world's largest population so they're kind of everywhere that's we have a lot true, here in the US i'm messing with i'm just joking anyway around. i like curry but i don't know if i like it enough to cook a hundred times different flavors and stuff you will i, I don't know you need to we'll complete see. that checklist that's true that's true, will. That's true. Yep. so in the middle of that they showed this adorable ghost uh i do like possessed this one tea tea cup like pot, brian's teapot. calling it teapot yes excuse me brian's calling it mrs potts all right. the time mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it's called pull tea geist instead of poltergeist which is just precious it's right uh, up there with gooigi the british like their tea so of course we have a uh, pull tea geist uh cramorant which is this weird <laughs> i i said it i said it looked like the bird kevin from up kind of yes kind of yeah. um mixed with those like pelican Pelipper things from uh, Super Mario Sunshine, the blue mm -hmm. ones. Uh, anyway, it's just a dirt bird, and it has a gulp missile move, which is apparently the only Pokemon that can use this move, where it regurgitates a fish that it swallowed and spits it right at the other Pokemon's face, which is absolutely disgusting. It's the drunken frat boy of Pokemons. I don't know if drunken frat boys... Eat they fish. regurgitate all over their opponents. I don't want to think about that. Uh, and then the biggest letdown for me is we still haven't seen what these evolutions or I'm sorry, evolutions. Yes, I would like some more EVs, but <laughs> evolutions for our three starters. Where the They're heck gonna are wait they? till the week before this game comes out yep. to show you at this point. I, I was prime surprised. that engine I until need to mass solidify it. capacity. And then they're gonna unleash the floodgates. Let the Pokemon I need to yeah. solidify my starter right no, now. No, you're you're buying both versions. I bought so I, I left the room when this part of the direct came on, so I was like, all right, I can clean up dinner because I was eating dinner as this is going on. Uh, but I knew I knew it was Pokemon, so I was like, I don't need to be there for the whole thing. And I came back in during the new Pokemon thing, so I saw that stuff. But my four year old daughter was watching, I was like, you know, keep watching, let me know, let daddy know if anything happens. You know, you see Pikachu or something like that. She comes running out of the other room you and she's like Pikachu. Daddy, they can go to the salon and you could do their hair. And I'm yeah. like, oh, the, the people or the Pokemon? She's like, both of them. I don't know if that's true or not, but I was just like, okay, yeah. that was her highlight of the whole direct. Of was course. Cool. Yeah. You can put on makeup. And Get I your said, style ten year savvy on. Not, ten year olds should not be allowed to put on makeup, but okay. Oh, man, it you looks know? great. I'm still really super excited. Like, top of the list. Cannot wait to play a new Pokemon game. I'm ready for it. The camps yep. thing I, was interesting. Because I got it, you know, like we've had these little Pokemon farms where you pet the we, Pokemon and do things before. I, but then yeah. they said, but then your friends could come and visit your camp. And I was I like, so is there like a camp building aspect to it or is it just a thing you can do? Building. I think visit. it's like show off your Pokemon. Like you can like show off your type. Yeah, but they mentioned you, know? you can level them up while you're there. So I'm wondering if you can do like some sort of stat manipulation through mini games or something. That, that That's the know. only thing that caught my eye. Oh, I feel like especially uh, with the cooking, they're pulling some pages from Quest. Anyway, all right, we got 20 minutes. Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online. Finally. Hey, Donnie, Lord, you did, they, 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 you, did you notice they, they made a point to say Super Nintendo Entertainment System, not yeah. SNES? I just want to point that out. <laughs> it is the SNES. I just want, okay. I, just, I don't really you know. They were I mean, clear. It is the SNES. They've <laughs> went on record. Nintendo has went on record and said it is the SNES. All right, we don't have time for this. Go, go, go. So, but but why did they take a point? Like, that was the first thing I said to Caroline is, what a mouthful. Why did they? Yeah. The Super Nintendo <laughs> Entertainment System. This is this is the classic system all over again, Kevin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic mini edition console. Um, 20 games out tomorrow for Nintendo that's, Switch Online subscribers. We'll add more. They showed off a fancy new SNES Bluetooth controller. Here's the thing. When they showed off those NES Joy-Cons, you can only buy one per account. There's some fine print on the thing. You have to have a verified Nintendo Switch Online. It's a Nintendo Switch Online exclusive. And it says a limit of four per account. So here's the thing. We're in a family. We don't know uh-huh. if that's a limit of four for all of us or if it's a limit of four for each of us. Because on the NES ones, it was one for all of us. Caroline right. is the only one that could buy them. Yep. I think that it's per account holder for the online service. So per so. family. Yeah. Per family. Yep. We're going to have to make some tough decisions about the family, I think. I don't know how many okay, people are going to buy one I'm of these. already laying claim to one. Dude. I want one. That's two. Yeah. I think Flex, you know, Jason's going to want one, right? That requires money. Jason might not want one. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Maybe we'll give one away for a... Uh, ooh. Ooh. Make September great again. I want now you're least talking. Least <laughs> if nobody's claiming a second one, I want at least two. No, you have to up your Patreon and, and see if you get... Ooh, the sure. That could do... We no, do for that any too. of them. You don't get any. Donnie's, Donnie's keeping one and raffling off three. <laughs> all right. Don. So they mentioned <laughs> the games. I'm not going to read all 20 games. I'm going to mention the, the highlights, right? Star Fox, Kirby Dream Land, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Super Mario World, Yoshi's Island. We get Tennis, Super Metroid. Of course, we get Link to the Past. Kirby's Dream Course, F-Zero. And a bunch of other stuff. Super Ghouls and Ghosts, if you like that. I don't like that game. Mm. Um, but they'll have others that are coming down the line. So we, we knew the Super Nintendo cometh, and it came. And here we go. Oh, big time. 20, 20 games, and we'll get more that come out. And uh, I do like that they... So when they showed the new icon, right? We're, we're going to get a download, a new icon. They're not going to mix up with my NES stuff, right? We're going to have a whole separate... It doesn't sound like it. it oh, no, like I'm, sure separate... I'm sure it'll be a completely different icon. Donnie's so, so hopes I... and dreams for Virtual yeah. Console are coming true. I, I said so. this three years ago. I hope that they do something to help you with the organization, though, because I irritates the crap out of me. So the thing is, I resized all of mine to be really small, but then they added 60 more, and I don't go in there enough to resize them. So now I'm just not going to resize them anymore. We should just be able to, like, auto-sort them or something That's true. Or, like, I I like the... The, the like I want like a rotating wheel or something. I don't yeah, want yeah. them like this splash of tiles. Like no, on the classics. There's yeah. no separation between any no. of the tiles. They all just blend together. It's too much. And then they add those SP modes and it just duplicated the game, but it's I'm not with in the same order. It's not next to it. Drove me nuts. Yeah. I'm 100% with you there. Um, yeah. Tetris 99. Now, I kind of zoned out here because I was trying to take notes with yeah. the Super Nintendo stuff. Here's what I got. There's DLC that you can buy and you yes. can like earn tickets by playing yes. the game, which let you get yes. themes and cool stickers and stuff. Yes. Yes. And there's a physical release. Yes. yes. Anything you else? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Mario the and new, Sonic. The new, DL, the new DLC will allow um, two players to play on the same console, though, which I know some people are asking for that to do like a versus uh, yeah, mode. Local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that makes you need sense. the DLC for that, so that's kind of a. Well, the physical bit of a release there. include all DLC. Yeah. Like, that they didn't give, how much is that price, though? Did they say? I don't know. No. Because it's a free game, so now you look at how much does the DLC stuff cost. So yeah, it's yeah, like 40 yeah, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Mario and Sonic. Well, it's not a free game. It's free for Nintendo Switch Online. There, there are people that don't yes. have it. They don't even know that's this true. game probably exists. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Mario and Sonic the Olympic Games. They showed off the retro stuff. You get the 8-bit, 16-bit courses. I was you get not to go aware that the field. retro things were taking a throwback to the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. I think that's a yeah, great yeah. touch. Hmm. Yep. Great touch. Damon X Machina got a little got a little love, and they showed out a prologue demo that's out today. You get to carry over your progress. You get online co-op. I told Caroline in the voice chat, I think this game now needs to transition to becoming a Nintendo Switch online game. They should just give this to people and let people play it and try to monetize them this way. And I hate to say that. I know Kaiju is still very, very excited about it. I still want to play it, but there's just no way at all I'm going to pay more than $20 for this game with there's Astral no Chain just out and, and Link's Awakening and Pokemon, like it's it's too there's too much. I got Overwatch, yeah. there's a lot of choices here. And I feel like this one's getting buried. And the fact that it's a co-op game scares me too. Yep. So the fact that it's an online co-op thing, like you need to game pass yeah. this bad boy. Put it in some yeah, libraries, Kaido, get some people playing it. Yeah, Kaiju and Tom Servo, I think the only two people that were like hard DS in this game. I know Jason was even a, a maybe, depending on what's coming out, but like the more they show, the least uh, it yeah. doesn't look good. I don't know. I don't know. I, we could be wrong. Maybe it's awesome, but it's going to get. Who knows? I think either way, even if it's great, it's still going to get buried by the flood of games. There's that are just coming. a lot. There's a lot. They're just yeah. going to outstage them. With Castle Crashers and Ori, and with, like, there's a lot of things, even in the digital space. I mean, there's mm-hmm. like 30 games coming out this month. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's tough sledding for this one right now. Rest Kevin, what is Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast? Dude, out of all the Star Wars games, why this one? I, I don't. And it's not a remake, right? Like, I mean, because what I saw no, looked no, garbo. I mean, it's it a is, straight this look, port. This looked horrible. 
It looks really bad. Horrible. Like if, if you're gonna do any and want that Nintendo Legacy, Shadows of the Empire, the N64 game. Oh yeah. yeah. Like like that. The second they're like Star Wars. I still I'm like, oh, can't cool. get over and, how awful he looked when he throws the lightsaber yeah. and he's holding it. He's like this. Yeah. The characters weren't even facing the right way as they're attacking. Like it was, <laughs> dude, it was so bad. Like I'm all for. All right, listen, Star Wars on Switch, good. That's a good thing. We're not getting it anywhere else, right? You know, it, it, as far as Nintendo, Nintendo should, game, we're getting for them. I mean, but this is a bad one. Nintendo should buy the license to like Rose Squadron, or just yes. they, they should just do ship stuff like Star yes. Fox, Star Fox, but Star Wars. Do that. Yes. Yep. Um, and I, just I, I let everybody else have the Jedi. Yes. Have that Nintendo Legacy. We had we had those games on there. If you want to do uh, Shadows of the Empire, do that one. Like have the Nintendo Legacy at least behind it because this one makes Talk about Doom sixty four zero sense. I would buy the Battle for Naboo thing, like that. Like if they were like, it's out now. I would buy it. Bring back Pod Racers. People like that too. Like, <sighs> yeah, it looks bad. So we've got yeah. EA's awesome looking Star Wars game, and to get in on the action, they released this. Mm. Yep. Oof. Rough. Bad. Assassin's Creed 4 and Rogue come with all DLC and motion controls. They always highlight that, just like Overwatch. Uh, with Assassin's Creed the Rebel Collection. We didn't get a date or a price. So this one's been kind of leaking. This, the, the SKUs have been popping up. I know it's like in Brazil and Italy. I think it's got yeah. listed for the past week. People have known about this. Um, I don't like Assassin's Creed 4, but I did play it. I played a lot of mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed 4 because um, that was a big release when it came out. So I think it's cool right. that a game like that can run on a portable. I think that's kind of neat. Um, well, did you look carefully at those? Yeah. Those? <laughs> yeah, just like <laughs> not, Assassin's not Star Creed Wars 3. Bad. Like, it was a good thing it followed after Star Wars because it looked good compared to that. But like you looked at, so, you know, Black Flag I'm a trying lot to be, is a ship combat. And I, I'm trying to be nicer. Cutouts. Trying to be nicer. Right? No, There's the Daniels be. of the world, like The Witcher and everything. It's not a console. This is a 3DS no, successor. So, it's a portable yeah. system. It's cool right, that he can run it. <laughs> Witcher looked better than any of these other ports that we're seeing. That's the problem. Like, so That's we talk true. about subpar ports. We got a lot in this direct, and Witcher looked best leaps and bounds out of all of them. Like, I'm glad you're doing it, but like, here's the thing: is like Vita had Assassin's Creed, it so Switch should be either. able to handle, but it should be able to handle a little bit. But to have these big epic ship battles and have your crew on board as literal cardboard cutouts of people just not moving, mm, yeah, That's, just don't put them there then. Like those are the things I'm crying out. Like if you're gonna do it, put some effort into it. If it's not systematically capable, fine. But make reductions and don't just make it look like Garbo to put it out. Sure, and we'll see. We'll see. We'll judge it when it comes out. Right, yeah, we have comparisons and stuff. Okay. Maybe it'll be good. My only issue with the offering is, like I said, I wasn't into the big ship pirate combat, which I, I think like I think that's divisive. People either love four for that or they hate it. But here's the thing. I still haven't played Rogue. I've held on to it for so long. Mm. I've never played Rogue. If they release Rogue separately, I might have. But having it bundled right. with four, I'm like, absolute no. <laughs> it's like an immediate yeah. no for me. I'm like, nope, not at all. No, that's true. They showed Dauntless again. Still no date. I want to play this game. I want to play free-to-play Monster Hunter. Sounds fun. And this looks more entertaining to me than Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter is like overwhelming for me, I think. I've tried it a few times. And I just can't get into it. But Dauntless it's, seems to be a little more accessible. Yeah, it's like Dauntless. simpler. Simpleton yeah. Monster there Hunter. Are, there are some things in like the older Monster Hunter games, which Generations Ultimate was based off of the old original Monster Hunter formula, that I think are more user-friendly compared to what Monster Hunter has developed into. And I think Dauntless is definitely one of those nice middle ground type things that yep. people can just jump into. Monster Hunter looks is a good. cascade I, I, I of statistics and like. menus. Yeah, mm. I want to see what it looks like on Switch because like the footage there was like not actual gameplay footage. Right, they said in the bottom. So like, apparently, I want to it's see what all the rage on Steam. I know, yeah. people love it. it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we had a sizzle reel. They showed all kinds of stuff: grid, farming simulator, Nino Kuni, NBA Two K Twenty. For all the games that they showed, by the way, I mentioned this uh, Carolina voice chat. You know, like Witcher, I still stand by it. Witcher. Does not look great. It looks like playable. I wouldn't call it mm-hmm. good. It still looks fuzzy. And edgy, like in, if you've seen The Witcher, it doesn't look good. It, it looks better looks than I thought. Playable, it would. like you could deal with it, but it doesn't look good. I wouldn't call it looking good. NBA 2K on Switch looks good. It's a good looking like version of the NBA game, and much better than some of these other big AAA games being downported to Switch. Okay. Um, you disagree? Yeah, I didn't think it looked that great. I thought actually out of that scissor reel, the best looking one that we got actual footage from because Outer Worlds made it a point saying not gameplay footage, like not yeah, footage yeah, from yeah. in a Switch. Now, not a good game, but Vampire, 
vampire, whatever you mm-hmm. want to say. Yeah. That one actually looked okay, but keep in mind that's very dark, very fuzzy. You can yeah, get away with foggy and all there. that to begin with. I yeah. mean, NBA yeah. 2K on Switch, you can like you can play it. It looks fine. Like oh, it definitely looks playable. It just didn't look as as polished as we're used to seeing when we see the oh, NBA games. Like oh my god, this it, yeah, doesn't no, look it can't look that. like PS4. I'm saying for right. the downport for running on like it sure. looks good. It's a good looking I, I see game. It's comparable to Witcher yeah. in those regards. Like, it's definitely play. playable. Looks good enough. Yeah, um, Caroline. We got a whopping. Caroline and Kevin. Caroline and Kevin. Let's we got go. a whopping. I don't know, Crossing. five minutes, ten minutes. However, did a whopping like amount of Animal Crossing. Minutes. Yeah, it was closer to ten minutes. All right, where do we start with Kevin? Like they basically touched on all of the normal parameters of Animal Crossing. We we touched back on things that people might not have you know seen at E three had they not watched the Treehouse stuff. Yep. There you start on the island. You have all of these phone apps and stuff. You can move your furniture inside your house or outside your house, which is game breaking for uh, the series. Um, Then they touched on just the normal Animal Crossing things where you can collect bugs and fish and there's new things every month stuff. And then they kind of threw salt and peppered in some stuff uh, that we haven't had before digging up a tree, a whole yeah. tree, yeah. and replacing it where you want it to be. Like, that's that's huge for me. Um, how many times have I been like, there's a tree here, I don't want to, you know, plant a you new don't one. Chop it, and you don't want to chop it down. Yeah. Grow, yeah. Uh, yeah. We can turn in our weeds now instead yeah, of just funny. throwing. They, actually, you didn't even pick up your weeds before. They weren't pick up items, you know. They were just, they disappeared. Yep. Uh, Brian said that Tom Weed be in the dealing business. Uh, <laughs> so you can catch snowflakes that's got to be <laughs> some be sort of crafting thing yeah, yeah. I, mean, I bet those are used to like i bet they do things like leaves and snowflakes are for helping craft holiday items like fall furniture oh, that would be so good i, I love bet that idea. Is. because you gotta you gotta figure now the, yeah. the thing that one of the biggest things they showed was the whole tom nook area that mm-hmm. we don't have the separate shops anymore it's all right there I so they have you... to have some way of compensating you might be able to build them eventually or craft them yeah but I think yeah. you will be able to build up on that and probably expand the Nook shop area. Right. Oh my gosh, Kevin, I need this game right now. I'm, I'm excited. I, this this was the most I saw because I actually didn't watch the Treehouse stuff because I was just mad at them for not having anything there mm-hmm. and talking about it uh, really at all except for Treehouse. So I, I'm excited for it. it looks good. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm all for it. I, I want to see more. I want to see we more. We have six more months. Is that how many we have? Yep. A long time. More than that. Donnie's Feels laughing like at us. Seven Why are you laughing at us for? I, I'm not laughing at all. I, I'm not laughing at you guys at all. I am reading oh, okay. the chat that I haven't been monitoring. Oh, and oh, Coach no. and Dev have been on Mixer <laughs> causing all kinds of trouble. Caroline, they're calling oh. Georgia fans short. They're saying Nintendo don't. I mean, they are throwing shade. Hard shade. It is hilarious. Boys? <laughs> Do I have to come over? They there? think we're not watching Mixer. Little do well, they are. know that all of the chats from Twitch and everything are all compiled into one view for me. I've seen them oh, all. Oh, I didn't know that. I just can't chat because we're on a. De- I keep looking at the time and I'm trying to get yeah, through yeah. the notes, so I, I haven't been chatting. Uh, but okay, Romaine, so before- Romaine is in there. Romaine says deadly premonitions. Of hashtag Donny game. So maybe like him and Grouchy. Maybe I'll give it a try. So before we move on to the next news, I want to give a, a warning to everybody, all Shack listeners. Uh, if you're listening <laughs> with your books, take them out now, turn it down, and we'll let Carol go on to the last news that they talked well, about. Well, hey, I do want to say about Animal Crossing. Um, no, 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 nobody cares about you and Animal Crossing. No, it's no, all no. It, it, looks, it looks better. The crafting stuff kind of just kind of concerns me a little the bit. The weather feels, system? Can we talk about weather? The weather looks the weather great. Sucks. That's it's a cool. good the thing. Wind, yeah. The wind looks great. All the individual uh, leaves on the tree blowing. Oh, yeah. it looks fantastic. It looks really good. But I'm um, worried, like, how much of this crafting, it really seems like it's baked into the entire part of the game. Like, oh, you've yeah, got to know it all. Well, the Too app bad. has it all. I tell you. It, you don't need to know it all. You just need to collect stuff. Yeah. Okay. A la Stardew Valley, a la Harvest Moon. Like, it's just collect your resources. You find them, collect it. Keep it, store it somewhere. Okay. But the, the whole, yeah. like, crafting this shovel to get the new thing to craft a better shovel to craft, like, yeah. that's something I've never gotten into. So oh, I just, I don't know bless. about that one. You just keep your crappy shovel. It's okay. Yeah, Maybe. It'll be fine. I mean, I like my, my Animal Crossing where I just had the shovel. <laughs> Why did I need my 18 like shovels? <laughs> upgrading your weapons in a game? We've been over there. This. Dev knows this. Like, this is a, an established <laughs> thing, Caroline. This is not a, a thing. Like, just give me the Lancer and let me go shoot stuff. I don't need to be bothered with now you've got to make, you know, 18 versions of the same thing. All right. All right. All right. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Now, we, <laughs> we knew this as soon as, as soon as it hit. Um, as soon as I saw it, I said, those are the Bionis and the Mechonis. Uh, oh, yeah. And it was hilarious. Of course, Caroline squealed, high-pitched voice, very loud. 
Um, but this is very, very exciting. We had thought that Monolith Soft had something to say, right? His wife retweeted. She has a history of doing that. We talked about in the Discord. This is really, really cool. I think this is way better than a Xenoblade X port coming. Because oh, for as, sure. as much as I liked Xenoblade X, you know, like I said, I never finished it, and I still have it, and I wouldn't replay it. I, Ten years I, later, we are getting a remade game. Yep. Looks like it's in the same engine that they used for either two or Torna You'd or You'd have whatever. to imagine so, for sure. I mean, the models look fantastic. This After game has having... been begging to be remade for, uh, forever, I for mean, so it, long time. It's so It was so muddy, you know, mm-hmm. on the Wii. Worse and on I, 3DS, and 3DS is terrible. I, I like that they wanted to go for that realism thing, but with what they accomplished with the anime kind of style in two it really lends itself to that kind of style mm-hmm. i think they did an amazing job and they hit it out of the park with that kind of style but it's oh, okay brian said that he will play this version because i struggled i hope there's a lot of quality of life improvements with this game because flipping through eight mm-hmm. different things on the bottom bar is very difficult to do as opposed to going through four different you know attacks that i gotta tell you your- if it's not i won't replay it but i mean so my my whole Affinity, if you even call it that. My whole tie to Xenoblade comes back to this game and had me having beaten it on the Wii. It was like my, my the last stalwart of what a great what I still consider a great console. And I loved this game at the time because it felt like a big console game, you know, on the it Wii was. that everybody had, you know, moved on from. GameStop exclusive, all of that. So it if was, they can it shiny huge. it up, make it look all nice and clear and crisp and HD and it was so the, different looking that I figured that it was a new game that was she sort did. Of a she was like, It's a new game. I was like, no, it's not. It can't be. sequel for the first game. <laughs> and then yeah. nah. if they can shiny it all up and give me all of the, you know, the, the home improvements, give me the new menus, easier navigation, better battle system, bake all of that Xenoblade 2 knowledge into the original Xenoblade, and it's a better game. I mean, I still think it's better, and I'll rebuy it and play it again. Day one pickup. Day one pickup. Kev? Oh, wait, sorry. What? What are we talking about? Um, <laughs> Here's no. No. Not for me. I, I did I did play a little bit on Wii, so I, I will give it that, but it no. Nah. Nope. All right, we got a couple questions. Um let's get them and let's get out of here. How can I formulate a thought, let alone a thoughtful question after that? How about this? Did Nintendo just win E3 2020? Let me go first. Sean Capri. No. Oh, Sean. There was no Pikmin. Oh, Mic drop. Mic drop. The the the, the oh. quest for Pikmin continues. The next Pikmin game is gonna be like a mobile game. <laughs> just wait. It's crazy because we really don't have, I mean, outside of Xenoblade, now that we have Xenoblade, we have Metroid, like the specter of what we think Metroid is. Mm-hmm. It's not coming out next year. No. We don't know anything about, like, 2020, really. Xenoblade <laughs> like, and Animal Crossing. Animal Shin Crossing? Megami Tensei, maybe. Okay. You know what I'm, I'm yeah, thinking, like, E3 probably. and beyond. You know, you guys yeah, yeah. catch oh, my, yeah, catch yeah, my drift. Right. I'm in, in gaming years, I always count from E3 to E3, not from January yep. 1 to January. <laughs> so, like, after next year's E3, so, like, We've got, you know, we'll have, what, three or four directs between now and e- E3, and probably each one, they'll probably give us a 2020 little tidbit, but yeah, they've got yeah. a whole new lineup to unveil to us. That's very, very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. On top of what has turned out to be an incredibly stacked fall. I said this insane bef- worse, last though. spring, that they had to get it in now, because we know what what's coming, and they are. Like, this is Switch's moment. This is its space. This is its niche. It gets to operate basically, I don't want to say unopposed because there's a hundred million PlayStation 4s out there, but everybody else is gearing up for the next thing. Yeah. This is Nintendo space. They're the only ones like game, 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 sell software right now. Um, so. Well, that, that's why my serious answer is that no, they didn't win E3 2020 because they're getting this stuff out now because the other two are gearing up for that big console thing. Yeah. So there's going to be huge yeah. news coming out of E3 2020. Yeah. Uh, yes, Nintendo, I'm sure, will go toe-to-toe with the big guys, but I think they may end up taking a back seat this year a little bit to those announcements simply because of the hardware and any new games that are coming to those platforms. As I said sure. when it was unveiled, Caroline, they still got Breath of the Wild 2, and that's going to be their next-gen console yep. co-op against. They're going to tell you. Yep. It's coming yep. out yep. next not next March. <laughs> not yep. this yeah. March, but the yep. next March. Yep. The March after next-gen. Right, but yeah. so that's, that's my point, though. It won't be out in 2020. So that's true. It's still, I think next year is going to be a little bit of a backseat year for Nintendo. Not much. They're still going to bring out stuff. That's fine. My backlog hurts. Yeah. True. I, 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 mm, you might be right. I mean, definitely after off the after the, the run that they've had for these past, what, three years, you could absolutely see them maybe taking a step back. But, yeah. I mean, as I say all the time, I still think they've got – they always have ports to pull from. I think yeah, they've got I a definitely. Mario game. 
I think yeah. they'll hit us with a Mario, and then I think they'll announce Zelda for 2021. And yeah, it's it's just it's just to get remember like this time last year we had a bunch of games that we knew weren't coming out this year that we knew were coming out next year. Sure. As you right. said, just we started this, we got Xenoblade and we have Animal Crossing. Yep. We don't know anything else, mm-hmm. so we knew more. Like we're, we were like, where was Yoshi last Definitely year? Where was this too. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, with all this stuff that we don't know, it's coming. So yes, they might have some of those, so but are they going to pull a stealth drop? Persona after stealth scramble, drop after stealth baby. Drop. God, <laughs> I mean, Persona Warriors. <laughs> but yes, yes, we're on par. I, I, I think next year's game is a Mario game. That's yeah. what I think it is. I'll have a big, Tokyo big Mirage new shiny game. Mario game. Um, and then Shalfi asked about um, Deadly Premonition. So he says, "Do I need to play Deadly Premonition?" I think we answered that question, or maybe not. <laughs> we we talked about that question. And uh, did Carol pass like out? It, during the Animal Crossing, or is she still playing WoW? <laughs> Both. Caroline, your yeah. WoW, your I WoW addiction is tearing this community apart. No, it's not. What have oh, I done? You, you, you I apparently done? haven't paying attention. This is all we talk about. You are perpetually in a Carol is playing WoW status. status. It does not change. Let me just say, I'm I not saw you playing Photoshop playing. earlier. That was it. Yeah, I'm not playing classic anymore because classic is a little bit too toxic for me. So I'm going back to retail on a casual basis. What is retail? I don't like for retail. Just the don't. main, the main WoW. But you're still playing WoW classic. It's just no, I'm not. I, I can't. I can't do it anymore. So you're playing can't. the old WoW now. I'm, I'm playing confused. the original WoW. Classic was going back to the original vanilla. Right, but Re- you're still playing Re- the newer version of the game, like the upres graphics and everything. Yes, on a casual so basis. Like, so. Yeah, same thing. We'll still continue on, everybody. She will not play any games except for that for a while. I've been playing Astral Chain, but we'll talk yeah. about that next week. Maybe. I'll take you a week. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we, we mm-hmm. probably won't have a show next week. Maybe. I don't know. To be determined, right now we're planning on taking next week off, and that's going to do it, guys. It's 7.58. We've got to get out of here. We've got to prepare for Shack number two. I hope you enjoy it. We're very, very excited to release it to you all. Um, in short order, but that's been Nintendo Direct Day, September 2019. Follow us on Twitter's at Shack Life, at PSVG Kevin, at the Nintendo Dame, at Plan Nintendo. That's it for us, and we're going to get out of here. Good night, Koopalings. Bye! Whenever you're ready. All right. This is Frederick from Fire Emblem Awakening, and I forgot the line already. What? <laughs> has been a production of the Play Some Video Games Podcast Network. Find more great content at PlaySomeVideoGames.com.